Hey everybody, this is Shadow Sniper, and I'm in a new server. I don't even know the name of it, actually. Just uh, Trenaris Wasteland or something. I don't even think that's Trenaris, is it? Anyway, it's some kind of a wasteland. And Arma 3. Anyway, um, the other server I usually stay on is daytime all the time, so this will be a little bit of a change. Let me turn up the audio a little bit. Let's see, it should be loud enough, really. Alright, so there's not very many people in this in this server, as you can see. And I'm blue for. I didn't know I was blue for. But I, can't, I thought I came in as independent. So anyway, um, I'm right here where this red circle is. Nothing really here. I'd like to get over here to a gun store, maybe, or something like that. I'm gonna do some uh, streaming audio from YouTube. And uh, it's coming from the YouTube channel Face Like the Sun. It's all one word Face Like the Sun. So if you like the, the audio that I'm getting ready to play, go and subscribe to him. I'm not monetizing this video uh, because I'm playing his audio. So you won't have any ads to skip or commercials or whatever. But um, let me start his audio for his YouTube video. It's about 20 minutes long. It's titled 27 Things That Will Happen in September to October 2015. Some very informative things. So wait here for about five seconds and I'll be right back. I received a message from somebody named Sealman on YouTube, and he had a list of things that were happening leading into September 2015 and October, and obviously everyone is talking about what's going to happen in September, what's going to happen in October. Is there an economic collapse? You know, is there a comet that's going to hit the Earth? All kinds of speculations, a lot of fear-mongering going on as well. But I wanted to give you this list that he sent me and go over them because it is a pretty extensive list and this is something that I was looking for actually in the whole September October fiasco going on on the internet a list you know something where everything is compiled in one place and what I've tried to do for you in the limited time here is go through each one of these and at least look for citations or sources that you guys can go back and look through and uh, so you know you guys can dig through it on your own as usual so all that will be in the description section but here are 27 things that are going to happen or supposed to happen in the month of September and some in October number one Rabbi Kaim Kanievsky stated that the Messiah who might be the Antichrist will be returning at the end of the sabbatical year, which is the 29th day of Elu, which falls on Saturday, September 12th. Number two, this is the Shemitah year. The final date of the seven year cycle ends around September 13th. Number three, Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, the Jewish New Year. The anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve, the sounding of the shofar, is on September 13th and the creation of Eve is celebrated September 15th. Number four, the 5776 Anno Lucius, the year of light, begins officially on September 14th. Number five, the UN resolution for Palestine to become a state will go into effect on September 15th. Number six, Jade Helm 15, which began on July 15th, 
publicly ends on September 15th. Number seven, the International Day of Peace happens on September 21st. And he put in parentheses, peace and safety, and that's a reference to 1 Thessalonians 5.3, where it talks about how people will be saying peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. And as a side note, the Day of Atonement begins just hours after the International Day of Peace, which completes on September 21st. So he is saying, is that the sudden destruction that the Bible talks about? Number eight, the year of Jubilees, the 70th year of Jubilees begins September 23rd. And here's a chart looking at all of the Jubilee years. Number nine, the Islamic Mecca pilgrimage, Hajj, the day of Arafat, representing standing of the day of resurrection, waiting for judgment and the gates of heaven to open, is between September 22nd and 23rd. Number 10, Ayud ul Adha, the Feast of Sacrifice, the Muslim time of sacrifice, is September 23rd through 26th. And as a side note, he put in 2016, the Muslim Feast of Sacrifice, the Eve, falls on September 11th. And number 11, and this one's interesting because uh, I saw this on another post and I saw several people talking about this, June 7th, 1967 falls in the Hebrew year 5727 adding 49 prophetic years to this date, we arrive in the Hebrew year 5776, which is 2015 on the Gregorian calendar. If one counts exactly 49, that's 360 days prophetic years, that's 17,640 days. From the June 7th, 1967 date of Jerusalem's recapture, we arrive at September 23rd, 2015, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Note. The Day of Atonement is on the 266th day of 2015. 266 days is the earliest a woman's pregnancy is considered full term. Very interesting, and I know this has all the references to the birth pangs that Jesus talks about in Matthew 24. Number 12. The Mayan cycle was 5,126 years. From September 11, 2001 to September 23, 2015, there are 5,126 days. So, interesting there. Number 13, CERN in Switzerland, firing at full power, crossing over, opening portals September 23rd through 24th. Now, I want to pause there on number 13 because I wanted to go back and double check what the schedule was for CERN. And what I found interesting is that I couldn't get back to that calendar PDF. Uh, it requires a login and you need to use credentials and this is interesting because originally the Anthony Patch website had a link to this PDF and now it's locked out which is very fascinating considering all the things surrounding Anthony Patch's recent uh, going underground in terms of talking about CERN and also the other thing that's interesting and now that we've brought up CERN here and I just want to stick on this for a moment CERN obviously is another organization that's celebrating the year of light and one of the things that they're going to do is what's called sesame and sesame is the synchrotron light for experimental science and applications in the middle east and it's a third generation synchrotron light source under construction in allen jordan it will be the middle east's first major international research center and they're trying to prevent the brain drain happening in the middle east by creating a scientific uh, mecca, if you will, in the Middle East. And what I found fascinating about the idea of sesame, obviously, we know the uh, saying open sesame. Um, but if you look at the etymology of the word sesame, here's what we find. It's an early 15th century, probably from Middle French, sesame, and directly from Latin sesamum, or nominative sesama, from Greek sesamon, Doric sesame, seed or fruit of the sesame plant, a very early borrowing via Phoenician from late Babylonian Shawa Shamu. And if you compare it to Assyrian, it literally means oil seed. First, as a magic password in 1785, translated of Gallen's Mil et Uninuits, where it opens the door of the thieves' den in Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves. Very interesting, and that's why. The phrase open sesame, which became current about 1826. 
So, again, strange coincidences, right? Right. To opening up of some sort of portal and uh, some sort of magical workings to surround all that concerning CERN. Moving on here, though. Number 14, Madonna Concert, Washington, D.C. And uh, the opening theme is the desecration of the bride and arrival of fallen angels. And uh, this list says September 23rd. I couldn't verify that. Uh, I did, however, see that Madonna is scheduled to play Washington, D.C. on September 12th. So uh, the date is off there, but um, nevertheless, it's still September. And interestingly, the tour goes to Philadelphia on the 24th and Boston on the 26th. It seems like she's hitting some of those areas on the East Coast right before the Pope gets there, which leads us to the next few things here he listed. Number 15, the Pope will be addressing U.S. Congress on the 24th of September. And this is the first time in world history that this is going to happen. Number 16, the Pope will address the UN General Assembly of World Leaders, the Sustainable Development. Uh, this is the announcement of the unification of the world's laws, the environment, religion, and distribution of wealth. And he will also be issuing an encyclical on September 25th. And then number 17, the Pope will be holding mass at Madison Square Garden in New York City at 6 p.m. on September 25th. And just to touch back, Madonna is playing Madison Square Garden on September 16th and 17th, about 10 days or 8 days before the Pope is going to do his mass. I don't think that's coincidence either. Probably some sort of ritual to set the way for the Pope to do his mass. Very interesting. 18, the Pope will be visiting the Church of Philadelphia on September 26th. And on the list here, it says the church itself has significance. Number 19, the French Prime Minister and John Kerry discussed the end of the 500-day climate chaos, which was declared on May 13th, 2014. That 500-day limit ends on September 25th. And this one leads into some other things about potential comments and stuff striking that's not on the list, but uh, I'll leave a link to a couple Ground Zero episodes with Clyde Lewis from a few days ago who discussed this interesting phenomenon. Uh, actually, there was a reverend who predicted that there would be uh, some sort of meteor strike that would happen, and then we had this Iran strike last week of an alleged meteor that struck Iran and the media blackout not talking about the issue, which is very fascinating on its own. Number 20, Tomorrow World slash Tomorrowland. It's the big rave concert. It will be celebrating false love and light, keys, antichrist, opening gates, and portals. Atlanta, Georgia, September 25th through 27th. And note the location, 33 degrees north and 84 degrees west. So on the 33 degree parallel north uh, latitude that has significance. And that's always fascinating that stuff always happens on the 33 degree parallel. Number 21, Feast of Tabernacles, the holiday of Sukkot, Feast of the Nations, the season of joy, September 27th through October 5th. Another interesting one, number 22, the fourth blood moon falls on September 28th. And then number 23, the beginning first bookend for the collapse of the US dollar, September 2015. I know that certain people have predicted this, so he, I think he just included that on the list. And again, I'll leave a couple links to sources that are suggesting that this is the case. Number 24, Chinese President Xi Jinping to visit the U.S. in September. And uh, there's no disclosed date yet, but there is another point of reference to September. Number 25, a possible new world order currency announcement driven by the IMF late October 2015. Number 26, to note, the parable of the fig tree. The average generation lasts 67 years, and some people have linked the budding of the fig tree to the birth of the nation of Israel in 1948. If you add 67 to 1948, you arrive at the year 2015. Very interesting. Number 27, to note, the Mahdi. Muslim clerics are predicting the return of their Mahdi September 2015. The Muslims have a prophecy of old written by the Islamic prophet Ali bin Ibn Abi Talib, which states that just before the coming of the Mahdi, a tall black man will rise up to take command of the West, and he will command the most powerful army on Earth. Hmm, 
sounds familiar, doesn't it? And I know certain people have talked about the Islamic Antichrist, which overall, from a biblical perspective, I don't really buy, but I do think there's some interesting stuff there. And to wrap it up, uh, that was all 27, but he writes in this note to me, there is a legion of demons on their way here right now, traveling at a high rate of speed. The legion's scouts are already here. The unveiling of the Baphomet statue in Chicago in July was a planting of the conquering flag. Satan is now in command. The hand of God has lifted, and this nation is no longer under his protection. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pray for your family, friends, neighbors, and countrymen. So that's the note I received. And again, I'll leave links to each one of these things uh, so you guys can do your own digging. But let me just briefly comment on all of this because a lot of people have asked me what my thoughts are with September. I do think there are some interesting things to consider here. And obviously there are a lot of things lining up to happen here. Could it be the announce official announcement of the new world order? Could it be the official collapse of the dollar? Uh, you know, the Chinese prime minister coming over to America. Could that be that beginning of the exchange uh, for a global currency that the IMF is discussing? It's all possible, and we'll just have to wait and see. But my whole thing has always been to prepare spiritually. Uh, yes, prepare physically to a certain extent. You know, get your bug out bags, be prepared to live off grid, whatever. But make sure that you're spiritually prepared, most importantly. And that means putting on the full armor of God daily. That means reading the word and being alert and aware, being a watchman, because things are obviously happening and a lot of changes are happening. And uh, based on the conversation that I actually got to have with Mark Flynn, who's the late David Flynn's brother last night for Canary Cry Radio, and that will post in a few days, he was saying how the illumined ones have a clock. They understand that there's a clock and they've been building up towards something, which is the arrival of their messiah and he believes that it's going to be so miraculous looking that a lot of people are going to fall for it it's going to be literally he believes what will appear to be a man come down from heaven and um, my comment to that was in order for the antichrist to arrive and having these signs and miracles to actually deceive people it's going to have to be very very powerful you know in the age of cgi and you know, video manipulation and stuff like that. It's gonna be very easy for people to be skeptical of this entity that will arrive. So the miracles that he performs will have to be very significant. So uh, that was my response to him. And the other thing that is very interesting that I just wanna throw in here, we know that in Genesis 1:14 it talks about the lights and the expanse of the heavens, how it separates day from night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for the days and years. Well, if you go to Revelation 12:1, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and a crown of 12 stars over her head. If we go to Stellarium, and actually Rob Skiba was the one who showed me this uh, a couple years ago, and um, I don't recall if he showed me the actual future date, but he definitely showed me what he believes was the birth of Jesus. And uh, if you go to Stellarium, and you know, which is the constellation and moving stars, planets, you know, it, it has all that stuff in this program. Uh, the date that's set to negative two is around the time of Jesus' birth, and you see that the view from Israel is pretty accurate in the description of a woman, which is Virgo, the virgin, clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars over her head, and the 12 stars which is represented by Leo, which is nine stars, and Venus, Jupiter, and Mercury. Now, if we go to October 15th, 2015, we see a very similar alignment in the heavens here, where you have Virgo the Virgin, clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and here's what I find very fascinating. You still have the 12 stars over her head, Leo nine, and then Jupiter, Mercury, and Venus. But there's a, another star, or a fourth planet there, and that's Mars. And we know that if you've looked at the planet of Mars and its connection to the ancient Canaanite worship of Mars, Sidonia, then uh, we have a rabbit hole that goes into all kinds of stuff with the connection to a red dragon that's chasing. And so I'm not saying that there is 
significance to this for sure, but I do want to point it out because it is very, very interesting. And while I did mention a couple videos ago about how we don't know exactly when things will go down and what time frame, uh, which is still true, I believe, um, I will say that these things that I listed here today from, uh, from Sealman is very fascinating, very interesting, and um, at the very least it should put us on high alert. And again, the most important thing is to prepare spiritually, prepare for the battle here, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and dark forces in the heavenly realm. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully it gets you guys thinking. Plenty of links going out to do your own research on this stuff. I know a lot of you have already done a lot of research. If you have something to add to the conversation, which I know everybody does, go ahead and leave a comment and um, leave links and you know different things that you have found in your search concerning the September fiasco. So there you have it. Have an awesome day, guys. God bless.